Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration with the New York School and Zydedax podcast. Our guest today is Leah Valau. Welcome, Leah. Hello, Lefteris. I'm really happy to be here today. Oh, it's great to have you here. Great. So tell us about you and your work. As As I was telling you before, this is a really difficult question because I'm still figuring out who I am and what I'm doing. When I was a, a teenager and I used to visit high school, my professor told a student is the one who studies. So I think I'm a designer because I'm designing every day still. I believe that it's not, you don't become a designer because you hold a degree only, but because you practice it every day. So yes, I'm a designer. I would also say that I'm an artist because it's also what I do. I'm just holding now three exhibitions in Germany and I teach. So then I'm a teacher in the university. So then maybe I'm a lecturer or a professor or other. Uh, I love researching and this is what I do when I am invited to certain speeches and I really love. And uh, finally I work in the international office and I became a director there. But I don't know what the director does. So then I wouldn't say I'm a director because this is very difficult to say. But yes, I'm working on a building up international relations, networking, doing double degrees and helping in every way I can to build up an international environment in our university. Sounds so great. basically that's me. <laughs> Tell us about your latest project. My greatest project. Your, your, your wow, latest, really one you're working on now. Yeah, your latest. Ah, the latest project, my, the last thing I've done. Well, okay. That's also complicated. Uh, in the last month, I've been doing several posters. Uh, I was just presenting this Camellia competition. I became finalist. We still don't know the outcome, so we are waiting for. I also present the one in Peru, which I'm also finalist, so also we don't know what's going on. Uh, we are signing two double degrees, one with uh, Peru uh, and one with Argentina. So we are working in a uh, heavy double degrees in our university. So in that direction. And I was telling before, I'm, I'm just holding a, an exhibition here and I'm preparing the next one. So I think uh, while I was holding a beautiful talk in Indonesia about uh, uh, the future of cities, This is one of the subjects I'm really interested in. It's one of my passions and uh, has always been there. And uh, I started in, uh, when I was uh, in the university because I studied the second degree in Italy. And then I moved to Finland to, to do an exchange year because I wanted to work about sustainable. Uh, at the time I was studying industrial design and I wanted to know more about systems, materials, And in that direction, I started this passion for uh, sustainable materials, what's going on, and then urbanistic and how we behave with the space and the society. So then I was just invited to that talk. So I was researching a lot about that. So this has been a little bit, and also in China. China was last week. Last week I was in the Beijing Design Week, also talking about, the, well, I was work, doing a workshop with some students also related with uh, how color can change uh, people to have a more engaged life and growing up the feeling of caring. I think I'm a difficult person because I just go in so many directions because I'm always curious and I always want to catch more than what I can actually take. Life is always too short for everything. So then I'm, I'm always kind of interested in different things. So it's very difficult to say, ah, this is your only last project because in the last month I've done so many things that I wouldn't say that is only one thing I've been focused on, but this is mostly mostly who I am. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I mean, for creative people, it's, you know, we, we can't say, we can't say, this is <laughs> <laughs> how did you get into teaching? Wow, that's a really beautiful story. So I was really not wishing to be a teacher. My dream was actually just to be a designer. I wanted to be an artist. I first study history of art. I finished it. It was a lovely degree. It was fantastic. I was learning a lot. And then they told me, okay, that, now you're going to work. And I was like, oh no, what? Working? No. Why? I'm so happy studying. Why should I work now? So then I was like, no, let's study another degree quickly. So maybe I'm still on time. And I went to my family and say, hey, 
I would like to continue studying. And they say, no, there is no money for that. So no. And then I say, well, I apply a scholarship. So I got this scholarship in, uh, in Instituto Europeo Design in Milano, because I was there at that moment in Italy. And I started there, but the conditions were, well, you have to teach. You have to become an assistant. I said, oh, I'm an assistant. And you have to realize in 2001, there were these computers that were so new. This Photoshop like had three buttons. It was so damn weird. And I was placed in that computer class. And you, I was just dreaming to become an artist suddenly. And I decided, okay, design is going to be something. I'm going to make my living out of art. So it's okay. It's kind of something in between. Let's do it. And then I was placed in that, in that kind of keller, in that kind of a room and dark with all these computers. And I was like, and now you become an assistant. I learned this Photoshop, later learned this Illustrator because you have to help the students when they come here and you have to help in the classes. And I started to like it. I love it. At certain point I was like, oh, wow, they were teaching me in a way. It was fantastic. I just discovered that teaching is not a one direction. It's not about information. It's really communication. So it's a growing up experience for the one who is delivering a content and the one who is, uh, who is interacting with you all the time. And that has led my way of educating from that moment until now. I always believe that uh, whoever is the person you're going to be talking to, probably they have a lot to give. And it doesn't matter the age or their previous education, but that they may know less about certain subject. They always have something to give you. And that is really wonderful. So that is how it started. It started in the university as an assistant. Then I went back to Barcelona, my own city. I, the university, the YET was opening in Mila, the, from Milan in Barcelona. And I just went to visit them. Always with this emotion that, ah, yes, I'm going to become a designer now. I was so happy. I had my degree. I had a super good grade. It was wonderful. And I went to them and I said, wow, this is my degree. This is my portfolio. They look it. Oh, wow, you have to teach here. And I was like, no, really? I was thinking about working somewhere. And then I was starting to work in the mornings in a, an architect studio where I already did my summer internship. Mm. And I started with one subject and started with one subject with like four hours a week. And after six, seven years, I was having something like 10 hours a day, which was crazy. I was waking up six o'clock in the morning and I was finishing with the master classes at something like eight, nine at the night. So I think it was hard too much. <laughs> this is how it went, the, the transition to become a teacher. But it's something I really didn't plan. Okay, so, so you, kept, you kept on teaching in Barcelona? Yep, I was starting the, my career in Barcelona. I was teaching in YET, I was teaching in the IARC, the Institute of Advanced Architecture because I started to work in the FAT. FAT is the, it's like the design association in Barcelona and they have a material center. And because I had this kind of uh, love for materials and I really wanted to know more, I ended up working there. And there I did my research about how to use materials, materials and textures, nanomaterial, materials and lightness, especially always innovation. And Due to that, I started to work in different places in the master degrees. And then after I decided I needed to design again because I really wanted to do it and life was passing by and I was like, no, 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 this is not going. And at the beginning it was fantastic because I was still kind of teaching and it was fine. But at a certain point, I just realized that the teaching was taking every time more time and a good teacher needs to be somebody who knows how to make the thing, so has a real experience. So then we opened the studio and then I went to teach a little bit less, then much less, and then I changed to the public university. And then I went more for coordination and deciding uh, a warm ups. And then the activity on design would become really my first thing. And I was really happy because the university was giving me to do their communication. And this was fantastic. It, I think it's a, it's a designer's dream to have the communication of your own university. It's like, ah, yes, I can just, do it now finally and this was for me fantastic wonderful wonderful so what uh, what has changed since you started teaching and until now what has changed? Oh, a lot of things have changed um i just think that uh, what i found more hard now is that uh 
the students are feeling much more pressured in generally from the society, from the family, for what they are supposed to take at the end. When I started, really we had a lot of uh, well, a lot of testing and uh, an error and. The grades didn't have so many feedback papers to fulfill and so many evaluation parameters and so many capacities and the bureaucracy was much less. So I was really free in my class. I was just taking my kids to the coffee and we were just sitting there and let's talk about design. And one day I was just arriving because on the way to the school, I found an exhibition. I was like, oh, whoa, this thing, this thing. Okay, kids, let's go to the exhibition. Nowadays, I cannot do that. I have to ask the papers, the permissions. It changed a lot. And then I was very free to invite people. And at the very beginning of my teaching, as I told you, I started really young. So I was really scared of teaching. I was always feeling I don't know enough. And this didn't change. I'm still feeling exactly the same way. I'm still scared of my students. I'm still every time thinking, oh, I should do it better. I don't know enough. And anyway, and after some time that I'm relaxing, but at the beginning, I'm always scared. And uh, in that being scared, it made me really do something that I still think it was wonderful. And it's, I was talking with a lot of professionals and bringing a lot of people who are working to my classes to teach with me. So during like two, three years, I was just like getting to know a lot of like designers. They just came to me. So I was going and saying, look, I'm a teacher. I'm teaching lighting. Uh, would you like to come over? And they were coming and I was so happy. I was learning so much. And then I was bringing the kids to the showrooms, to the exhibitions. It was like what I think should be the class that I would like to go to. And then I was just trying to make it so I could learn together with them, especially at the very beginning, because I was still very young and I was missing a lot of things. With the years, I just got better. I got much more knowledge. I was much more organized. I had much more things registered. It was easier already because I had more knowledge. But I have a very particular education career because I started with a subject and I teach really different things. And I was teaching all the first years on design foundations. That means I was teaching fashion, interior, industrial, car design, graphic design, advertising, fashion and marketing. They're completely different profiles. You need a different language, you need a different setup, and you need to be learning all the time. And I think that for me, the best thing of education was the possibility of still being a student. <laughs> I was a, I, I was just learning. I'm still learning every day, a lot. And then I was coordinating thesis, and this is an amazing experience. And with master students, I also had an amazing team. And this was also an amazing opportunity to learn a lot, to question a lot of things. A lot of people who goes to master already has a previous degree, has worked previously. So you really have a very nice uh, content. So I think what has changed basically is that when we started, we had much more freedom. And now, is much more limited and you have to have the day by day, you have to define the day by day what you're going to be doing, which makes a sense because you have to coordinate it with the team. But I still love when we started this, let's go to the coffee, let's get a beer together, let's coordinate now what you've been doing, what, ah, okay, you've been more here, more there. It was easier, it was smaller the institution and it was nicer to do that way. Now, I just feel that people are kind of much more tired it's more difficult to bring after classes for a beer together to see what you've, what you've been doing. I think we kind of uh, become older. Like design education is becoming older. That's a little bit like a strange way to tell it. Oh. We become better, we have more knowledge, but there is less, uh, it's less spontane, like they say in German, less uh, fresh in a way. I don't know if I'm explaining myself. Mm -hmm. oh, I mean, it, it, it can... What about the challenges that we've faced in the last couple of years? Well, I just think has mostly the, to find the right motivation, to find always the link, to find the, the way to connect. I think that the most difficult thing is, the, is connecting like you used to do it before. Now you have to make much more effort to get the same connection mm -hmm. that you used to get much more quickly. And then... You have to be much more uh, patient on listening, on understanding, because I think the generation that is coming, uh, they kind of break much easier and they um, take very personal what you tell, everything you tell, every word you tell. So you have to be extremely careful on every word you use, 
on how you guide the conversation. But certain things are exactly the same. You just have to work with them to make their better selves. So it's just to give them the tools, the things that you think that will help them to find their own path because they cannot make yours. They have to make their own. But I just think that it needs it needs you to come, come a lot down because they have so many stimuli. They see so many things that you really have to make them arrive to your class to stop. You need a kind of arrival time so you can start working that before they were already like arriving with a very big wish. Now they have so many inputs that you need to come down and also kind of give sometimes the self-confidence they lack because they see everything. It seems everything so easy. There are so many tutorials. And then when they start to make the drawing, it doesn't come out and they get very quickly frustrated. There is so much to compare yourself to. That it's kind of, I think it's not easy to be a young person nowadays. I think it's, it's beautiful because they have so many things available. But I think it must be really very hard to. Fantastic. So how, how can we do design education differently? If, if you had a magic wand and you could do anything you wanted. So what, what would you do? The first thing, I would get a super big building, buy all the machines I could buy and put them inside. I mean, I would have printings, I would have letter types, I would have sewing machines. I would have a big amount of water because when you paint, you need a lot of water and I would have it next to me. So I would have a lot of basins. I would have brushes. I would have uh, things to work on wood, ceramics. I've got everything I had when I was in Finland because I was in a fantastic school. I was there studying and I was realizing that in some places you also have kindergarten. You also have being paid for studies. The, the food is costing one year and a half. And there are some countries that solve it and I, we just have to copy. It's not so difficult. In a way it's there, it's working. They had an amazing facilities with everything you need. You are going to the forest in Finland to find the trees looking which kind of tree is smelling this tree so you could make furniture out of it. I just think that you cannot design if you don't touch things and you don't experiment and you build and you have access whenever you want. This university was always open. I had a small car, I could go in and out whenever I wanted. I could leave my things there. I had my computer, I had my table, was my second home. They also gave us money for parties. That was crazy in a way. Why? Because they thought it was important for us to join, to have community. I believe university is one of these magical moments and it has to be magical because you're young, you're full of things, you're full of energy, you're full of passion. And design is about doing. Design is not a theoretical subject. At the end, you have a product. You can design it in the computer, it's true, but then you're gonna print this catalog, you're gonna make this furniture, you're gonna end up building that furniture. So we were building the things, we had the chance I was doing wood classes. So at the end, I can work as a carpenter and I was taking metallic classes. I took uh, ceramic classes there because I could, I could not use any of those machines without the permission, without the previous course. So I was like the happiest baby in the happiest uh, playground place ever. That was fantastic. I think everybody should have that access equally with equally access. I think education should be for everybody, should be free, should be open, should be available. And so if I had all the money of the world, I would for sure have that university without no doubts. <laughs> That's fantastic. How, how can our viewers find you and, and listeners? How can they find you? I've got a web page with my name, soliavilaur.com. They can also find me in the university in eram.cat. Cat is because we are Catalonia. It's not because we are an animal, you know, but it's the same thing. So they can also find me there any moment. They can call and they can contact me or just, I think the, in Instagram, I'm also there and arroba Lia Villaurciara Viglio. So in Instagram, I've got more my art work, like kind of art process. In Facebook, I've got a little bit my, like uh, when I talk with other professionals in the field of education, like speeches, collaborations, poster exhibitions. It's more the design field, it's not the art one. The art I keep for the Instagram. And then I've got a link in my professional profile. So if you're looking for my professional in the university, you can find me in LinkedIn. If you want to see everything, my webpage, uh, in Facebook about uh, kind of contact with other professors and stuff like that, and in Instagram art. The, I'm, I have it a little bit separated to so don't confuse so much. 
Fantastic. We'll put all the links down at the bottom of the video. So what, what advice would you like okay, to give us? Thank you very much. What advice? That's such a complicated thing. I think I would like to close this post with the first post you made when you interview Phil, because I agree with him completely 100% play. I think that's the work he was telling in his post and he started with it and I want to continue because I think he's completely right. And it's exactly what you also believe because we were talking before. And yeah, play, experiment, don't be afraid of uh, failures and try to enjoy it. Life is really short. Try to enjoy. If you like design, try to enjoy it and stick to yourself. Be honest to yourself. I think it's something that, because it's, it makes you really happy, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Leah. It was a fantastic conversation today. And we'll hope to see you soon again. All the best. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye.